we come to this sacred hour on this sacred day in this sacred and glorious place to offer our praise and thanksgiving and worship to receive the most precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the sacrament of the Mass, the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, at which God himself gives us his very being for our redemption. We center our thoughts, our prayers, and our desires on the true and the living God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The sacrifice of the Holy Mass this day is offered to the praise and glory of Almighty God, praying for all who have been affected by the coronavirus, COVID-19. We remember those who have died we pray for those who are engaged in medical research, seeking a vaccine. And we pray for all who are bereaved and grieving at this time, for those who are experiencing isolation and loneliness. We pray for our bishops, John, Diane and Samuel, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for all the bishops of the Anglican Communion, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. We pray for our parish and our people. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as we prepare to worship Almighty God, we recall our sins and our failings. So let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgiveth all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Vouchsafe, we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, 
who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the first book of Moses, commonly called Genesis. And Jacob rose up that night and took his two wives and his two woman servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the right, O Lord, consider my complaint, and hearken unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence, and let thine eyes look upon the thing that is equal. Thou hast proved and visited mine heart in the night season. Thou hast tried me and shalt find no wickedness in me. For I am utterly purposed that my mouth shall not offend. As for the works of men, by the words of thy lips I have kept me from the ways of the destroyer. O hold thou up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, O God, for thou shalt hear me. Incline thine ear to me, and hearken unto my words. Show thy marvellous loving kindness, thou that art the Saviour of them which put the trust in thee, from such as resist thy right hand. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans. I say the truth in Christ, brothers and sisters. I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. cried in the day and in the night before thee. 
continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus heard of the beheading of John the Baptist, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained, twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, beside women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May the words of this Holy Gospel wash away my sin and cleanse my heart. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Learning to speak a new language is almost always exciting. It's a different perspective. It's a wonderful challenge, perhaps, to experience the acquiring of a new language. I trust that if you are engaged in the study or the acquiring of a new language, that you will find it an invigorating and an inspiring and exhilarating life-giving experience. Yesterday, I was talking with Mark Fraser and Mother Britt Bjurstrom, who are now living in a place called Chevy Chase, which is near DC, in a place called Maryland. And you can tell I am still learning to speak American because I cannot say Marillan. I can only say Maryland. Mark and Mother Britt Fraser uh, Bjurstrom send their best wishes and their love to all. Mark is hard at work studying Scottish Gaelic. It must be something in the name Fraser, because that other great linguist who is constantly translating out of Spanish into English, especially the works of Borges, Jimmy Fraser, who is given the gift of tongues in so many ways, he also is a very great linguist. Alas, this is also a time of acquiring a new language, linguistic skills over the last few months, as we have had to learn new ways of looking at illness, new ways of looking at the harsh reality of the world of virus, viral infections, COVID-19 and the coronavirus. 
they are words with which only the specialists in the past were familiar, but have now become everyday parts of our language and grammar and vocabulary, pandemic, cocooning, social distancing, are words that are part of our everyday parlance. Perhaps we are paralyzed with bewilderment. One of the things that has happened with this acquiring of a new language is that we have changed our priorities. I don't know if you've noticed, but time seems to be running at an entirely different pace. It's not that reality has changed, it's that our perceptions and our perspectives have altered and changed in radical ways. Here, where we are, where we are located, we see things from a particular perspective. When we are above, as the aerial photography of this volume by Robert Cameron and Jack Smith above Los Angeles shows us, we see ourselves from an entirely new and different perspective. This building, which looks so large on the inside, from above is but one of many buildings along this boulevard. We've had to learn to see ourselves, to appreciate ourselves, and to know time in a different way. We have had to re-prioritize what is important and what is trivial, what is merely passing and of no significance whatsoever. We ask questions that I hope and pray are deeper than the trivia we have obsessed about in the past. What is important to you? To whom do you matter? With whom do you relate? Where is God? What is good for you and what is unhelpful in your life? Is God and faith and worship a nourishing experience or simply another occasion over which to get your ontological underwear in a right twist? I pray not. I pray and hope that these liturgies that we are live streaming actually bring punctuation to the grammar of your life. The 24 hour period that we were so familiar with before, where we would work for eight, 10, 12 hours and then sleep for another eight hours, seems to have altered. We seem to be falling into a different rhythm, a different perspective. And so it is with Christ in today's gospel. His cousin, St. John the Baptist, had just been martyred and executed. And what does Christ do? He goes to a place apart. He takes a distance between himself and the events of his cousin's death and murder. Christ goes 
to the quiet place, to the desert. The disciples can only see the desert as a place of desolation that cannot provide sustenance for them or for the 5,000 who have followed them. Lord, we have here but five loaves, barley loaves of bread and two fish. How can we feed so many, 5,000? There is an answer to the hunger. There is an answer to the isolation and to the loneliness. And it is that Christ is already there. Christ fills those who are hung hungry. We experience in the liturgy today sadness and sorrow and grief and mourning. We hear the encounter of Jacob with the stranger at the ford of Jabbok. He wrestles through the entire night with this complete stranger. And as the sun begins to rise in the east, so Jacob clings on to the stranger who asks, let me go, let me go, it's dawn, I must be going. But he will not let go, but holds the stranger. It says face to face in the English. The Hebrew is panim el panim, which is nostrils to nostrils, which gives one an indication of how intense this wrestling was. There is an increased vulnerability because it is none other than an angel with whom Jacob wrestles through the night. And the angel touches the hollow of Jacob's thigh and dislocates his bone, that thereafter he will limp to remember his encounter not just with a stranger, not just with an angel, but with God himself. To see God is certain death, but Jacob says, I have seen God panim el panim, nostril to nostril, face to face. Presence proximity, solidarity in the lonely place, in the place that we think is the desert, there is to be found God himself and Christ who offers himself in the blessed sacrament, the bread and the wine that feeds us and brings us to eternal life after which we need never thirst, we will slake our thirst on the sacrament. We are not abandoned. We are not left alone. We are comforted and given strength and assurance. And we need not look any further for solace, for Christ himself is the bread of life. He it is who with his very self can feed 5,000. God holds nothing back in the mass. God holds nothing back in the sacraments of the church, but gives his very heart, his very body, God gives his very being for us, for the life of the world.
for the renewal of creation in which we know eternal and the life-giving presence of Christ himself. May these sacraments support us and strengthen us. May the grace of God always lead us through darkness into eternal light. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And so we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesu Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sit us at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father for John, Diane, and Samuel, our bishops, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Guy, Lutheran bishop in this city, for Jose, Roman Catholic archbishop in this city, for Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Patriarch of the East, for the leaders of the free churches, and especially for the bishops of the Anglican communion who would have been meeting for the Lambeth Conference at this time. We pray for God's blessing on them. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray this day for the new province of Alexandria, created from the former diocese of Egypt with North Africa and the Horn of Africa, in the Episcopal Church of Jerusalem and the Middle East, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of our world. We pray for all who are caught up in civil strife, violence, or warfare. We pray for the peace of the world and for all who work for justice, peace, reconciliation, and truth. We pray for Sudan and Syria, for Jerusalem and the Holy Land, we pray for the International Red Cross and Red Crescent, for Amnesty International, for all who work to alleviate the suffering of others. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for individuals who need our intercessions. This day, we pray especially for Barbara and Larry Griffith, for Father Nick Griffith, their son, and for M Mother Yane Kim. We pray for Father Vincent Shamu and Florence, for Oscar, who is homeless, for Jimmy Hughes, 
Bill Daniel, Hugh De Winter and George, Coy Leon Henderson, Chad and Megan Henderson Trammell, Melvin Creighton, Miranda and Kate Gardner. We continue to pray for Mason Rose, for Nora Hammond's son, Brett. And in silence, we name before God those who are known only to us. And I invite you to type their names, if you so desire, in the comment box. that God may bring healing and wholeness in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died, for the recently departed Alan Parker, Caroline Sophie Espana, Olivia de Havilland, Regis Philbin, George Zalang, Representative John Lewis, Carolyn Ullman, Pastor Benjamin and Pastor David of the Malagasy Lutheran Church, Nick Cordero, Hugh Downs, John Leon Owen Jr., Carl Reiner, Gail King Donaldson. And for those whose years mind fall near this time, Jimmy and Barbara Dove, Roy and Chris Ellis, Peter Kempson, Henry Wright Davis, Gil Buckingham, Frank Joseph Wright, Cassie May de Grandis Grant, Vance Becker, Jack Hobby, Earl James Harris, Joy Carper, Richard Sidney Oglesby, Frida Jessup, Cassie Peebles, Jean White, Richard Scheiss, Gordon Miller, Stella McCarthy. And for all who have gone before us in the faith of Christ, rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would invite you now, if you are seated at home, to stand if you are able, and to stretch your limbs, to have a good stretch, get the blood circulating again. And we come now to the peace Christ is our peace. He hath reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now I invite you to share with those with whom you live a sign of Christ's peace. And the safest and easiest way to do that is simply by bowing and wishing peace Couple of announcements. Masses will be taking place as usual on Tuesday and Wednesday evening at seven o'clock in the coming week. And then on Saturday at five o'clock, the Latin Vigil Mass and next Sunday as usual, the 10.30 Mass. An announcement just ahead of time on Sunday, the 20th of September, Bishop John Taylor will be conducting a diocesan liturgy in which everyone is invited to participate as you are participating now. If you would like to support our work and ministry in this place, we would very much appreciate and be glad of that. You can go to our parish's website which is www.stthomashollywood.org, and that's all written out longhand, stthomashollywood.org. The only unusual thing is there are two T's together 
one at the end of Saint and one at the beginning of Thomas. Please put the two T's in, otherwise you won't get the website, you will get something else. stthomashollywood.org. Also our diocesan website, you may visit that and support the COVID-19 emergency appeal, One Body, One Spirit, for which we are extremely grateful. It is doing tremendous work with many parishes in the vast disparity of Southern California, this part of God's vineyard that we know as the Diocese of Los Angeles. That's all the announcements for this week. And so the offertory sentence, walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the good of all his church. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. 
Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, Thine only Son, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of thine Holy Spirit and according to thine holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. my Lord and my God. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. my Lord and my God. And therefore, let us proclaim the great mystery of faith. Christ hath died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once 
for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking to his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer unto thee this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before thee this bread and this cup, and we thank thee for counting us worthy to stand in thy presence and serve thee. Send thine Holy Ghost on John, Diane, and Samuel, our bishops, Michael, our presiding bishop, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and on all thy people, and gather into one in thy kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of our Blessed Lady, Mary, ever virgin, Queen of the angels of the little portion, Saint Thomas, the apostle, our patron and protector, Saint Marianne and Damien of Molokai, and all thy saints, may praise and glorify thee forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be thine, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us Therefore, let us keep the feast. This is the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive thee. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. The holy gifts of God for the holy people of God. There is only one who is holy. There is only one who is Lord, Jesus Christ 
to the glory of God the Father. Amen. loving kindness, thou that art the saviour of them which put their trust in thee, for such as resist, from such as resist thy right hand. Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard thy word be deaf to clamour and dispute May the tongues which have sung thy praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of thy love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with thy body be refreshed with the fullness of thy life. Glory be to thee forever. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. I invite you now to join with us in the recitation of the Angelus, the anthem appropriate to this period of the church's year, the memorial of the incarnation. The angel of the Lord brought tidings unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.